They're breathtaking, truly magnificent. And for once, they prove size doesn't matter. I'm talking about March of the Penguins, a little film that's been a huge hit around the world. There are no big stars, no big budgets, no big special effects, just hundreds and hundreds of enchanting little creatures doing what comes naturally. That means you can expect some lengthy love scenes and some violence. In short, a movie about life and death that is unique, a masterpiece. It really is the journey of a lifetime, with wonderful characters that'll steal your hearts, the heroic emperor penguins of Antarctica. In the far off distance, they look like people, shimmery figures appearing through the haze. The mystery is, who are they and where are they walking? And it's the reason why I, I choose this shot for the beginning of the film, because you can be confused. You don't know if they're nomads or human. And the shimmer makes it actually look hot. Yeah, you're it right. It looks but like a desert. But it's not hot, it's very cool. This icy landscape is Antarctica, and our little people are emperor penguins. Once a year, they emerge from the sea, gather together before starting out on an epic journey. A 100 kilometer march, one by one, to their breeding ground to find a soulmate. It's this simple story, beautifully told by French filmmaker Luc Jacquet, that has audiences everywhere raving. When you decided to make this film, were you aiming to make a Hollywood blockbuster? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. Of course not. And now there's talk you may even be nominated for an Oscar. We will see. <laughs> Simply, March of the Penguins is breathtaking. As a backdrop, there's the massive and menacing expanse of the Antarctic continent. And then in close-up, in exquisite detail, the Emperor Penguins. This film was uh, made by a, a very small group of crazy persons uh, who liked the challenge. Despite his success, Luc Jacquet lives quietly in the French countryside. His first expedition to Antarctica was 12 years ago as a scientist. Straight away, he was awestruck by the place and its quirky inhabitants. Ever since, Luc's wanted to tell their story. What attracted you to going to the end of the world? The end of the world. <laughs> the end of the world makes for happy penguins, and happy penguins like to make more happy penguins. It's an ancient ritual, a long march to safe ground, and then the fun begins. In the search for the perfect partner, they attract their soulmate through song. They are like human, simply because they are so tender and take a lot of time to dance together. Their courtship is like a beautiful ballet performed in front of Luke's cameras.
and yet you were very discreet in what you showed. Maybe because I am a discreet man. But maybe it also gives it a more mysterious air by not revealing more. Yes, but you know, maybe this is the difference between erotism and pornography. And for me, it's, this difference is very important. It's a documentary. It has no special effects. It has no movie stars, blah, blah. But, uh, but somehow something in that story speaks to people. Australian filmmaker George Miller, the director behind Mad Max and Babe, is a Luke Chiquet and Emperor Penguin fan. It's a wonderful metaphor for humankind about how to be as a parent, how we are, how we bond, and particularly how we work as a community. Luke's team spent a year filming the penguins at work and at play. They are not shy and sometimes they came very close uh, to the tripod and sometimes they were and just under the tripod. Their look there is, you know, what are you, you're in my way. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing here? Uh, it was funny because they were so close that we have to push them just for film. Just yeah. to film the other penguins, please, my guy, could you move? <laughs> Get out of my shot. Yeah. Strangely, the onset of winter signals the start of new life in the penguin world. After producing her egg, the female will give it to her partner to keep warm. You can't help but hold your breath as the penguins attempt this incredibly delicate and difficult transfer. It's the difference between life and death. If the egg is on the ice any longer than a minute, it's all over. The sense of loss is almost human. I don't know another example in, in the nature, for example, of a such critical moment in the life of a species. If you can compare that in the human species, if like the, the mother take the embryo and give the embryo to the father in the freezer, you know, it, it's crazy. Male emperors are sensitive new age guys. They incubate the eggs while the exhausted and hungry mothers march back to the sea for food. Standing around is a typical bloke thing to do, but these dads guard their precious cargo through the bitter cold of winter, waiting for their partner's return. To survive, the shuffling men with their eggs take turns on the outside of the circle to minimize their exposure to the elements. Do you see it as a love story? Or is it more a story of survival? <laughs> it's not a love story, but it's a story about life and death. Um, the love, for the penguins is a way to survive because they have they need a very strong link between the couple to stay alive for 45 days the men wait then the first cracks appear the tiny chicks make their entrance singing and hungry nature has programmed it so within hours of the chicks hatching the mothers return from their trek to feed them. It's an extraordinary feat of, of nature. They're each kind of parent and, and one goes to see while the other stays home and looks after the kid. I mean, it's us and what we're all trying to do, except they seem to do it well. So it's a fantastic story. There he is. 
George Miller is so entranced by the story, he's been making his own Emperor Penguin film for the last four years. One of the things we wanted to do with the film was make it look so real that the audience would want to reach out and touch the screen. So he's got six million feathers on him. George's digital animation, Happy Feet, is still very much under wraps, not due for release until the end of next year. But we can tell you it's a musical and its lead character, Mumble, is a penguin who can't sing. In terms of Luke's success, did anyone anticipate how successful March of the Penguins would be? No, not really. I mean, uh, uh, look, bottom line, all filmmaking comes down to good storytelling. So the March of the Penguins uh, is really ultimately a good story. It just happens to be written by nature. Nature's story is so like our own, we can't help but share the penguin's joy, their struggle and their anguish. But even more threatening than their predators, global warming jeopardises their habitat, their very existence. All the planet is in danger. It's a huge struggle because when you are an ecologist, you know that the world has to live in balance. And our society doesn't live in balance. Our society wants more and more and more. But I have a strong feeling that we have to do something. And if I can do something with my, with my film, it's perfect. So, Tara, this is almost like a minefield, so we have to, uh, to be very careful where we step on. Yeah. Otherwise, we can collapse a nest here. Our own penguins are also at risk. Here at Phillip Island in Victoria, scientist Dr Andre Kirajia is part of a team doing its best to protect them. This looks like a male and it's just building the nest, getting ready for the female. Like their cousins in Antarctica, these fairy or little penguins are a barometer of the health of the environment. About quite the same size as an emperor penguin. <laughs> now the emperor penguins are heaps more docile. Are they? This one is, I think it's they have the small, uh, the short person syndrome. They're really <laughs> nasty. They bite you and they make sure that they tell you they don't like you. But they're very cute when they make their nightly dash from the sea to their nests in the dunes. very cautious on the shore but then it's almost like they're saying okay all clear ready set run for me it's the last frontier I have a lot of respect for them with his film now grossing more than 100 million dollars Luke Chiquet may be the hottest name in Hollywood right now but you won't find him there. He prefers his wildlife in more natural settings, whether it's here at home in France or in Antarctica. And perhaps that's the secret to his success. He's as starstruck by his cast and their daily struggle to survive as the audience is. They are so beautiful. They are so handsome. Uh, I can say, you can say handsome for penguins. <laughs> They are very impressive, they are so aesthetic. They are not funny, they are not clumsy. Sometimes, of course, they are clumsy because they fall down. Because, but most of the time, they are more beautiful than everything else. Hello, I'm Tom Steinford. Thank you for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our extra minute segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes, which are on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.